I want to say thank you to every one of you on behalf of the Williams family who have prayed for my sister Maureen and my extended family, both the Baileys and the Williams as we go through our time of difficulty, our time of grief and our time of mourning. I really want to say thank you. Just to let you know, Maureen is out of hospital. She's now walking and she's by my mom and dad. So we need to give God thanks and praise for his goodness uh, towards us. So continue um, to pray for us um, during these um, troubled times. Turn your Bibles with me, please, to Psalms chapter 8. Let us stand as we read a portion of God's word uh, this morning. I'll be reading from the New King James Version, so it may be very slightly different in the versions that you have. Psalms chapter 8. When you found it, please stand. Let's read together. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and nursing infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies. That you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. For you have made him a little lower than the angels. And you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have made him to have dominion over the works of your hand. You have put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen. Even the beasts of the field. The birds of the air. And the fish of the sea. That pass through the parts of the sea. O oh Lord. Our Lord. How excellent is your name. Come on, let's read that verse together. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Come on, read it to your friend and tell him. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Come on, let's do it again as we sing, give praise to God. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Come on, let's give God a praise in the house this morning. He's an excellent God. And we worship him uh, this morning. Uh, the song said that you are excellent God. You are excellent. And we're not going to sing that this morning. But we have an excellent God. Amen. We have a God who cares. A God who understands. Yes. And a God who knows. There is nothing that is impossible for him to do. And so as we worship him this morning. We give him praise and we give him thanks. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Is worthy of our praise uh, today. Just bow your heads with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. So, Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father, that we can come to you this morning. We can bring all our cares and our worries before you. You're excellent, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're excellent in all the earth. Oh, God. We worship you. You're awesome. Oh, God, as we come with our praise and our thanksgiving this morning, we ask you, God, that you'll fill this house with your glory as your presence is felt amongst your children. Oh, God, let the praises go up, come up before you and let your blessing come down in the lives of your children this morning. We ask you for healing this morning, oh God. We ask you for deliverance this morning. Every contrary spirit that is none of you, God, we bring it under subjection to you this morning. Every ailment, oh God, we bring it under to to subjection this morning. Every situation of cancerous, oh God, we bring it under subjection this morning. Every diabetic situation, God, we bring it under subjection to you this morning. Oh God, every problem that fails is your children this morning we bring it under subjection to you this morning because you are excellent God and we worship you so take the praise of your children today as we lift up your name this morning in Jesus name amen come on give the Lord a praise as we enter a time of worship I welcome the worship team led by sister Yvonne come on let's continue to worship 
as we enter this time of worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, our Lord is excellent. Excellent Jesus, you're excellent. Oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. Come on, just begin to thank him this morning. You're here in the house of the Lord to give him glory, to give him praise. In spite of situation and circumstance, guess what? He's still God and he still reigns. Amen. So someone just clap your hands unto the Lord for he is good, he is kind and his mercies endureth forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He hears our cry. He hears our call. I love you, Lord, because you've heard my cry and my supplication because he has inclined his ear unto me. Hear my cry, O oh Lord. So hear my cry, O oh Lord. Attend unto our prayer to the ends of the earth. Will I cry on to Thee? Said when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Yes, Lord. Oh 
from all of your enemies. <laughs> Jesus, when your heart is overwhelmed, <laughs> where do you go now? That is higher. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. Come on, hear my cry. Oh Lord. Hear my cry, oh Lord. Yes, Jesus. worship. Be not discouraged. Be not dismayed. All I ask you to do is praise your God. Praise your King. Because in your praise there is victory. Amen. Can someone just lift their hands? Is that okay? Just lift your hands to the King of Kings. Just lift your hands to the Lord of Lords this morning. He will hear your cry. Yes, you will. Jesus, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me. 
me a vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom. You know just what to do. Yeah. And that's all it is this morning. Just sing with us this morning. God, I look to you. Hallelujah. Let's help. God, I look to you. God, I look to you. I won't be overwhelmed. I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. Give me vision. To see things like you to do. See things like
Somebody give me praise right now, forever, all my days. Thank you, Lord, we praise you. Thank you, Lord, we praise you. Lift your hand and give him praise, somebody. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Our God reigns. Yes, he does. Come on, somebody give him a praise right now. Clap your hands before the Lord and give him praise right now and say, Lord, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we got to say to ourselves and everybody around us in this function to say, Lord, from eternity to eternity you are God why are you so mindful of us we've got yet but a small part in the eternity but God you are mindful of us in that small part of eternity from eternity to eternity you are God you do not begin you do not end but right in the middle of eternity you smiled at us we can't live more than a hundred years but you smiled at us we cannot serve you for centuries, but you smiled at us. We get old quick, but you smiled at us. We get sick quick, but you smiled at us. What a great God we serve. Somebody give him praise right now. Come on, clap your hands and give him praise right now. Tell your neighbor, our God reigns and he's able to keep you from falling come on clap your hands before the lord hallelujah 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 we bless you lord we bless you we bless you hallelujah when we have challenges around in our world stay seated for sis be seated for a few moments hallelujah we bless the name of jesus hallelujah we have challenges all around us but god is able 
Does somebody believe that God is able? Does somebody believe that God is able? Hallelujah. If you're sick this morning, just put your hand on your own head and say, God, heal me today because you are able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you feel like a situation might be trying to overcome you, put your hand on your own head and say, Lord, I will overcome and I will not be overcome in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If somebody's sick and you know they're sick, but you got to, you, you know that if God ever touched them and you know that God will touch them, lift up your hand and call their name right now. Call their name out in this atmosphere right now. Call their name. If you know somebody who's unwell, call their name out in this atmosphere and say, Lord, touch them. And I don't mean just sick, sick as in physically sick. Sometimes their mind is gone. Call their name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody lift their hand and give him praise right now. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I bless the name of Jesus Christ for his presence here today and for his blessing upon us. Hallelujah. 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 And if it had not been for our God on our side, then where would we be? We'd be lost. But we're here. We're in his presence. And we're rejoicing in his presence. Somebody give him praise right now. Give him praise. Hallelujah. We're going to seek God in intercessory prayer right now. For the world around us. That needs God. This season. Is the season of gay pride. LGBT pride. Using God's confident rainbow to say accept us or we will come after you but hear me from eternity to eternity God is God it don't matter how many MPs you have on your side from eternity to eternity God is God hmm. and you can fast and mess about with man but when you try and drag God off his throne, careful. Nobody's demanding that anybody doesn't get their equal rights before the law. But when it comes to what God has created, it cannot be uncreated. Do you hear me, somebody? I don't care who you are. When God creates, it cannot be uncreated. No weapon from hell can uncreate it. What God says is amen. And so let it be. Somebody give God praise right now. The Jesus message is to love and to care. But do not destruct or reorganize what he demands from us. Somebody give him praise. We're going to pray in intercession for the, those who are going through a struggle in their lives. And that they want a hand, the hand of God. They, just, they don't need a hand because maybe they've had a hand from somebody from here and from there and from before. But now they need the hand of God to touch them. And to tell them that there is life beyond what you are going through. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. So I'm going to invite now, I'm going to invite now, I'm going to invite our sister Sadie Maynard. Can you come, Sadie, for me, please? I think I can see you at the corner of my eye. Good thing my glasses are working. Hallelujah. And I'd love you just to bring a prayer for us, for those who are going through their challenge, that God would restore them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you going through a challenge today that you need God to touch and to restore you? He is able to keep you, somebody say it, from falling. Hallelujah. If that's you, I want you to stand where you are. And if you need to come down to the front, come down to the front. But if you're going through a challenge, where with your God is saying to you today, where with God is saying to you today, you can either stand where you are or you can come down to the front. Hallelujah. God bless you. Is there anybody else? You can either stand where you are or you can come down to the front. Hallelujah. Trouble is coming. But for trouble, there is something called God Almighty. For trouble in your life, 
there is somebody called Jesus Christ of Nazareth and he never fails he never fails he never fails hallelujah hallelujah if you want to come if you want to come come if you want to stand where you are stand where you are but some of us need to gather around here we need a touch from God does anybody need a touch from God I've called one of our elders wives here to pray now because she believes hallelujah hallelujah because sometimes it's all wrapped around one person but sometimes we need somebody else to touch heaven for us hallelujah 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 come 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 is anybody else hallelujah hallelujah oh god i feel god just pulling like a crazy magnet this morning i feel god pulling us together oh hallelujah just hug somebody and don't you ever feel like you have to stand here and if you have to cry tears cry tears if you need to we got enough tissue we got enough handkerchief we can help you stand with somebody and if you need to cry it out cry it out and if somebody doesn't like it today you can you're gonna have to leave here today because we cry when we need to cry when we need to but God is able hallelujah Say it. hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you thank you thank you hallelujah to your holy name thank you Jesus hallelujah 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 Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we just want to worship you. We come in your presence, Lord, because there's no one else that we can go to. No one in heaven, no one on earth that we can call upon. But Lord, we call upon your name the name of Jesus because he died on Calvary to set us free he gave his life so freely that we we could have hope of eternal life he gave his life so freely that today we can call on his name Jesus 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 that precious precious name of Jesus the one who covers us, the one who knows us. He knows our down sitting, he knows our rising afar. And Lord, we just call on your name because we know that you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or even think. Our minds sometimes get confused, Lord, but you, Lord, you, Lord, you, Lord, you know. You're able, oh God, to understand you're able to do more than we can ask or think. Lord, there's so many needs in this very community that we are in. In our church community, Lord, there's so many needs. Only you know them, my God. Only you understand. And so we come, Lord, putting them before you this morning, asking that you'd have control, oh God, of every situation. Lord, we don't know, we don't understand, but you do. And so we come, Lord, kneeling down, reporting them at your feet, that you, Lord, would overtake, that you will direct, that you will have control, that you, Lord Jesus, will come in our midst, and that you will create in this atmosphere, Lord God, the belief that you are able, oh God, to do what we ask. And so, Lord Jesus, we just ask, oh my God, that every individual who is in need of something from you, that their faith will rise in you, that they will believe that you're able, oh God, that they will hold that hand of yours, Lord Jesus. And even though their hand will be frail, but oh God, if they could just hold on to you, you're able to pull them through. You're able to take them through. You're able, Lord, to deliver them. And so, my God, I just ask, oh God, that in your mercy, Lord, in your mercy, my God, I can tell of a Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you, your name, you are above the Lord 
Jesus, that you, oh God, are able, hallelujah, oh, praise, oh, glory to God, who is able, 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 able to do more than we can ask or think. We give you the praise, Lord. We give you the glory. We give you, Lord Jesus, the thanks. We give you all. Oh, God, and we say thank you. In your name, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody say, God is able. 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 My God is able. Say, my God is able. My God is able. My God is able. I feel like shouting to somebody. God is able. God is able. Yes, he is. What he said he will do. He's gonna fulfill. He's Lord. gonna fulfill every promise. Every promise. promise to you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't. Cause he won't give, give up. up on you. He's able.
thank you, Lord. Oh, the blood prevails, 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 the blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Somebody give me praise right now. The blood prevails, yes. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. The blood prevails. Hey. Hey. Oh, the blood prevails. The blood prevails. Oh, the blood prevails. 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 Yes it does. Yes it does. Yes it does. Yes it does. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. He's able. He's able. Clap your hands, somebody give him praise right now. Sons of the Spirit. Sons of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood prevails, yeah. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Somebody give him praise right now. Lift up somebody's hand. Say the blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody give him praise right now. Hallelujah. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. He's able. able. Somebody give him praise. He's able. Just touch our three people with the anointing. About four people with the anointing that God gives you. And just say, I I, I command the blessing over you now. By the authority of Jesus Christ. Just nudge somebody. Just touch them by the hand. You don't have to hug them. Just say, I command the anointing over you. Ah, by the blood of Jesus, I command the anointing over you. The blood prevails. Hallelujah. The blood prevails. 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 Just grab somebody's hand and say, The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. The blood prevails. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody lift their hands and praise him right now. For everybody who does not believe in this building right now, there is enough of us to break free from disbelief and deadness and say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can do it, Lord. We believe you, Lord. Somebody shout, yes, Lord. You can do it, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That blood, that blood. Somebody give him praise right now. Clap your hands before the Lord. The blood prevail. Thank you, Jesus. And you know something that the enemy always tells you that if God doesn't do it right now in this second, then you don't need to believe God. Hallelujah. Somebody give him praise right now. Somebody who believes God beyond what they see with their eyes immediately, give him praise right now. I'm going to tell the enemy, you could make me sick another day, but I believe God for my healing. Believe God. The blood prevails. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right now. Give God praise. Stand up and clap your hands before the Lord. Somebody who's spirit filled right now. Lift your hands and say the blood prevails. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Feel God in this place. Talking to somebody. Telling somebody that you might not see it today, but the miracle is on its way to you. 
hallelujah just believe in your heart and say God live or die I shall see my deliverer ah somebody give him praise right now hallelujah hallelujah you hear me somebody Jesus he's on his way Bible says the woman had just a small amount of oil left in the Old Testament it says the woman had a small amount of oil left she had a little bit of oil left and she was preparing to die but the prophet was on his way Oh, somebody give him praise right now. If you need God's divine hand, you can't just accept this as another Sunday. You can't just accept this as the 9th of July or the 10th of July. You gotta say, this is my miracle day. This is my miracle day. You can't just say, this is 2017. This is July. This is another date. This is not just another date. Bible said the woman just had a little bit of oil left and she was trying to make it stretch and she got to that day she said that day that day that 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 good day she said this is the day that we will eat and die but God sent the prophet and the miracle was on its way so in the midst of a toil while she had to believe that God was sending a sign just wait a little while while the problem thinks it has hold of you, God is on his way. God is coming where you are. Somebody give him praise right now. So when the enemy plants every weapon formed against you, make him form them. They will not prosper because the prophet's on his way. The prophet's on his way to say, woman, make me a meal. Go get some more oil pots. The miracle is coming to your house. Somebody give God praise right now. I feel the presence and the power of God coming to my house. But what God tells me, he says, don't, don't you ever doubt me. Somebody give him praise right now. I feel a pulse coming on under God right now to tell somebody. I feel a Holy Ghost pause. Somebody give God praise right now. I know you still feel the pain, but the miracle's on the way. I know it still looks like it's the same thing, but the miracle from God is on the way. I don't know why I'm pausing to tell somebody. I don't know what the challenge is, but I know who God is. Somebody give him praise right now. I don't know what the challenge is, but I know David had his Goliath. <laughs> and Moses had the Red Sea. <laughs> and Joshua had Jericho. Spirit of God, somebody help me right now. And then Lazarus had to wrestle with death. Until death took him down in his grave. And God said, four days, you better come back up. I've got stuff for you to do. Somebody give him praise right now. You may have your lion's den to deal with. Jesus. But God is calling you to open up your ears to hear him. And he will shut the lion's mouth. Somebody give God praise. If you want God to shut the lion's mouth, you're going to have to praise him. Somebody give him praise right now. Somebody give him praise right now. If you want him to shut that lion's mouth. Hallelujah. 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 You're going to do it, Lord. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I don't want to read it. I want to see it. See that miracle. See it. See it manifest before the Lord. See it. See it manifest. Blessed be his name. Thank you, Lord. Somebody lift their hand and give him praise right now. Hallelujah. What a miracle working God we serve. 
What a miracle working God we serve. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give him praise. Come on. He's worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't get distracted, just trust God. Hallelujah. This is the season where the enemy will tell you that everything is over. Hmm. And you just better accept and be patient like Job. But change is coming. Somebody give God praise right now. Change is coming and is here i receive it now lord in jesus mighty name somebody give him praise right now we're gonna be breaking bread together very shortly after this because there's healing when we connect and commune with the holy ghost and through the supper of the lord through the communion through the fellowship we are gonna be restored in fellowship to Jesus Christ. Somebody give God praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And although the enemy wants to tell you, to curtail your praise, to hinder your praying, don't stop praying. Don't stop praising. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, it's great to be in God's house. Hallelujah. I want to give God thanks for all of our visiting friends who are here today. If you're a visiting friend, just wave your hand before the Lord. And we welcome you in the name of the Lord. We welcome you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're visiting in the house today, we thank God for you. And we praise God for you today. Amen. We're going to be sharing communion. And if you're born again and you're baptized in faith in the kingdom of God, then please feel free to share in communion with us today. And if you're not... Just sharing the fellowship of God today. Amen. Praise God. We're going to um, um, have the scripture reading. Um, we're going to invite the scripture reader. Did you say it, Kim? I came. <laughs> Come and read the scripture for us, brother. Amen. And it's taken from Luke chapter 15. And we were reading the first few verses in Luke chapter 15. Stand when if you've found it in your Bibles, and if you haven't, it will be on the screens also. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture reading we've taken from Luke 15, verse 3 to 7. And he spake to the parable, and spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after, which lost, after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep with, which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than one, over 99 just persons which need no repentance. We say amen to the reading of God's word. Amen. Thank you, Akeem. I'm going to ask the um, ushers to get ready, and we will receive our offering for today. So please use your envelopes if you can. And uh, as you're giving, give unto the Lord. Please remember that we have not got the uh, special uh, envelopes yet for the balcony uh, missions fund that we have, the balcony fund. But if you use your envelopes wisely, you'll be able to give towards it just use in the restricted area just put balcony fund 2017 in there if you need to put that in there amen can i also remind those sponsors for sister tia where's sister tia for her trip can you stand for me please sister tia amen 
And then we're talking about money. Praise God. Um, Sister Tia is planning on, the, um, she's, she's um, going on a missions trip later on this year. And we have, um, we've graciously got, gracefully got eight sponsors for her. But I could not remember who those sponsors were. So please identify yourself to either Tia or Sister Sharon Atkinson. So that Tia can be assured of her sponsorship. And that is, Tia is going away. She needs about a thousand pounds worth of sponsors. And um, we have, um, and we have put in the committal 200 already. So she only needed about eight more sponsors from that. But if you want to sponsor her, you can still sponsor her whatever amount you can. But we're looking for, we were looking for eight sponsors, uh, uh, eight sponsors to give a hundred pounds each. And we, and on the day we got about nine. So thank God. But if you'd like to help Tia also with any gift of any amount, just let her know. Um, after service or you can put it on your uh, tides envelope as well and just put Tia's missions trip okay on the tides envelope as well and that will go directly to Tia also amen but uh, so so please remember that as you are giving to God let's stand I'm gonna pray over that before you give and so that God would just pour out his blessings upon your life amen because we don't want to shorten God's hand. Listen, you know, some challenges come in your life and then the devil tells you to just hold back your hand when the challenge comes. But you can't hold back your hand because God has provided everything that you need to live and to prosper. Amen? Amen. Stand with me if, uh, as you give your tithes and your offering today. I want you to pray that blessing over you today. Uh, today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that in our day, you are our provision. We thank you, Lord God, that you are not just a miracle of history. We thank you, Lord God, that history tells us that you are provision. But Lord, present reality tells us that you more than provide for your people. So Father God, in this present reality... In the financial climate that we are in, we give our tithes and offering to you, knowing that you are God who can and will provide. You gave a name to mankind saying, remember that I am Jehovah Jireh. I will and can provide. So in this season, we lift up an offering to you, worthy of your name, because you can and will provide. Receive it in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Amen. Somebody give God praise right now. Make sure you fill out your envelopes and take your time to give your offering to the ushers. Indicate to them where you are and they will give you an envelope. You sign it up and you give it in and we rejoice in the Lord. Amen. We are a chosen generation Oh, for to show is excellent
Oh, okay, it's working. <laughs> right, good afternoon, church. Please be ready to receive this week's notices. So firstly, we do have evening service tonight. That'll be starting at 6.30 here at The Rock. Tomorrow, we have prayer and fasting. That will be at New Spring Street, starting at 10 a.m. Tuesday morning, we have Seniors Progressive Pathway. This is also at New Spring Street at 10.30 a.m. for Tuesday. Wednesday, we've got prayer at 12. This is New Spring Street as well. And Thursday, we have New Believers Class. This is at 7 p.m. on New Spring Street. And Friday this week, there's no canos, so please don't bring your young people out because it's not on this week. Um, on Sunday, the 20th of August, we are celebrating 50 years. So tickets can be purchased here for the gala, or they can be purchased online at Eventbrite. £35 for adults, £10 for children. Um, can you please come out and celebrate with us? We'd like to have as many people as possible. There will be a drinks reception, a free course meal, various guest artists, choir, comedy, presentations, and a DJ. Oh, okay, really going out this year. So that will be on Sunday, the 20th of August, um, next month. This month, on Saturday, the 15th of July, we have an event called Blessed to be Blessed. This is a hosting, of, no, sorry, the people that are hosting the event are called Gospel Factor. So tickets are available here at the church as well. They're £12 for adults, £8 for children. This will also be having special guest artists, live contests and performances. There'll be food, drinks available, jewellery, bags, books, CDs, literally everything I can see here. So I say it like a good event. That's called Blessed to be Blessed, and that's on Saturday, the 15th of July. Doors open at 2 p.m. and it's until 9.30 p.m. And then on my birthday, TNT Productions actually have a production coming out. So I'm going to get Roma to come up and explain. And I think she's got a video to show as well. Okay, good morning, everybody. Morning. Um, TNT Productions are doing their, <laughs> their third production. It's called In the Midst. There's flyers outside on the front desk. Um, it's a story about the Burke family. Since the man of the house, Deacon Vincent Burke has passed away, his daughters, Veronica and Vanessa, deal with their bereavement in very different ways. Their mother has persevered to hold the family together for the past 16 years. However, there are secrets that need to be protected, as they could be serious ramifications if they came out. Can the Burke family finally keep can the Burke family continue to keep their secrets for much longer as time goes on and life takes its toll? Whatever happens, remember God is in the midst of it all. Amen. It will be a nice for all the family, guaranteed to have you crying with laughter, crying in emotion in the only way that TNT can do. Okay, tickets are available online from the Crescent Theatre website. They're £14. The show start, the doors open at 6. The show starts at 7. Please book your tickets in advance. They are selling quick and you can pick where you sit so you can get the best view. It's a really good theatre, so we are really encouraging you to, to, to come out and support us. There will be a video shown at the end of church. That will just give you a little bit of an in, 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 invite, insight into the play. So um, God bless you all. We thank, thank you in advance and appreciate everything that you've done for us. And we've got other events. So if you miss this one, there will be others. All right. God bless you all. <laughs> thank you, Roma. <laughs> all right. Um, next, we have our national convention coming up. This is at the end of the month, the 28th of July to the 30th. The early bird tickets have now ended. So tickets are now full price. Adults are £30. We've got here seniors are... 20 for the whole weekend and then if you just want to go for the Sunday adults are 20 pound and seniors are 10 and it's free for children on the 26th of August next month we have the Macmillan Cancer Support Charity Ball this is from 7 p.m. till late and tickets are 35 pounds if you're interested in going to the charity ball to show some support can you please see Paul at Rowan should be able to give you more information about that the admin team are now looking for looking to email notices, oh, might not have to do this anymore, um, looking to email the week's notices if you have provided them with an email address. So if not, could you please see Sharon Atkinson or someone in the team of admin to um, give your email address and then they'll be able to get that out to you. Um, the Rocks Food Bank is donating food and drinks to Sister Carol Griffins or any other members of the food team. The food bank's open every Thursday. This is from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. So can you please give your donations then? We have books for sale at the back. Um, these are all books inspired by the word of God. So if you're interested in buying any more, then please can you go out to the back after service. If you have any prayer requests, we do ask that you put them in the basket underneath the pulpit so these can be prayed for, especially if you have people in hospital or anybody recovering from procedures so we can just cover them in prayer. And if you want to make any donations by debit card, 
we are now taking debit card payments. So if you can please see Sister Shannon Atkinson at the back and she'll be able to help you. I've been told here that credit cards are not accepted, however. And lastly, but not least, we have these week's birthdays. So we've got Paul Wilcox on the 10th, which is tomorrow. We've got Kieran Hines and Rachel Nevins on Thursday the 13th. And lastly, we have Melissa Reed on Friday the 14th of July. Thank you for your time. For someone who talks a lot, says you don't do mics. <laughs> Amen. Let's give God praise. Amen. Just a couple of quick things just to remind you that tickets are available, so please go. To the stand at the back, Sister Sharon, and also the flyers are also available for you if you want one of those flyers. I'm not taking any more notices at the moment as we want to share communion together. Those of you who do have notices, put them on the notices for me and um, we are going to really be cutting down on the length on the amount of notices that we have so please pre-plan your notice giving thank you i want you to turn your bibles with me to luke chapter 15 and we will pray and seek god for a word and then we will share communion together amen i'd love there to be a less movement around as we do this Amen. Let's say amen once you've found that scripture. Luke chapter 15. Last week we were sharing about the lost son and wrapping our understanding around the fatherhood of God as God begins to speak to us through his position of being our heavenly father. Amen. We'll go a little bit further and looking at something else now in this season that we are in. Somebody lift their hands to God right now. Father, fill our hearts with your word and your spirit that we may receive and walk in authority in Jesus' name. Amen, somebody. Amen. As we come to share communion together, we are bound by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody say amen in this place. As we come to share communion together, we are bound by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen together today. We can say amen because we have been through what we call the redemption work of Jesus Christ. The Bible looks at Luke and reminds us of the book of Luke. And in chapter 15, we are reminded of a lost son, a lost sheep, and a lost coin. In Luke chapter 15, we're reminded that anything lost has to be found by God. Amen? If it needs to be redeemed, it must be found by God. Somebody say amen. And so when God finds something that is lost, he brings his redemptive power in focus. The Bible says that Jesus spoke answering the scribes and the Pharisees. And they murmured each one of them. And, the, and, and, and they said, and they drew near to him. And all the publicans and the sinners to hear him. So he had a mixed crowd. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. This is the introduction to what Jesus is about to share with them. Somebody say amen. Sometimes we forget that Jesus was looking for that which was lost. And sometimes we carry on like we've always been found. Somebody say amen but don't look at your neighbor. Sometimes some of us always carry on like we were born near the cross and Jesus brought us in when we were almost just born. That sin never touched our lives and we never ever did anything wrong. We walk around like, oh, we can't touch dirt because we are so holy. But Jesus looked at these people who were murmuring and he reminded them of the father heart and the redemptive power of God to redeem. Amen. And so we're coming in focus into the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of Jesus reminds us of this. He says these words. What man of you having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine? In the wilderness and go after that which is lost 
until he find it. And when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, which was lost. I say unto you, likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Somebody say amen to God's word. As Jesus begins to enlighten us in what heaven is pleased with, it connects us to his father heart. It not only connects us to his father heart, it connects us to his agenda on earth. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, because he has anointed me to, to set loose, to liberate, to bring back, to open the blind eyes. Hallelujah. And so he comes with this message now. And in this message, he comes with that same mantle of redemption. Some of us are lost and we don't know it. The agenda that we are going through this week is a group of people who are lost, broken, damaged. Jesus said, this is why the spirit is upon me. He has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. In this little story, he tells us of a man with a lost sheep. And the context here is of somebody who was part of his fold. And then they got lost. What do you mean, preacher? Sometimes when we understand fold, we understand that to be human beings. To be human beings is to be part of God's fold. Every one of us was made by God. Each one of us is going through the birth canal that God made. Amen. And if you didn't go through it, there's something wrong. If you were made in a factory, you can lift your hand and say amen. And call your father Zanusi. But you were not made in a factory. You were made by procreation. Somebody say amen. Therefore, you might look like your mother or your father. And when you are rude, you always look like your father. That's what you women always say. See your child there. So some of the DNA or the genes or the ethnicities from your parents flow through to you. God is enlightening us to understand that we are all his children. Some have gone astray and some are part of the fold. In this season, we must understand that when people are damaged, they will do anything. When people are damaged, they will believe anything. When people are damaged, they will commit any kind of crime. When people are damaged, they will have all kinds of sexuality. And I'm serious here. When people are damaged, they are lost. Somebody say lost. To be lost is without wisdom, is without salvation, is without faith, is without understanding as to who you are and what you are on the earth for. To be lost is to be away from God, is to be away from that redemptive hand, is to be away from God stopping you from falling into the judgment. To be lost is to be ready to damage yourself. To be lost is to be in a place where no salvation is. To be lost is in darkness. But the marvelous light is coming. Somebody give God praise. In this season that we are in, we see a lot of lost people. Understand me somebody. A lot of lost people who identify themselves as whatever they feel like. I was seeing a TV documentary or a show or whatever it is. I think it was on the, the news where a man decided that he was marrying the Eiffel Tower. And he married the Eiffel Tower. I don't know if he carried it over the threshold. But the man just mad. But he was allowed to express his sexuality. His preference. Because that's the era that we're living in. 
But God has given us a rule and order. And when God gives a rule and order, whatever disobey his rules and order comes under judgment. If you don't like it, you can bite it. This is the scripture. We have to understand that God does not change. God's word does not change. And no matter how much you try to interpret it your way, it has no personal interpretation. But the Bible gives you rule and order for life. Somebody give God praise and don't get frightened. Live under the authority of the word and it will not damage you. In the situation that we have in the scripture, the sheep were lost. Somebody say lost. And lost sometimes means that you are in a position where you don't know you're lost. You ever been in that position? I've been driving some places and I thought I knew where I was. Thank God for sat now. I've been driving in some areas and I'm thinking, I know this area, but I didn't. It just looked familiar. And so the problem that I had was I was lost and I did not know it. Somebody give God praise. Because sometimes you are lost and you don't know it. Because the rules that God has given you have been thrown away. But in Jesus' name, what God puts will not be broken down. Somebody give God praise right now. So what I'm saying to you is that in this critical situation, Jesus alerts us that when you are lost, you are lost. And you need a deliverer. He was asking the question, which one of you can uh, tell me that if you had a sheep that was lost, you wouldn't go and find it? Because what he was alerting them to understand is the publicans and sinners around him were lost sheep. And he was about to bring them into the fold. Sometimes we need to understand that God is looking for that which was lost. That which is damaged. That which is broken. That which is unsightly. So right now in this season where everything is coming out of the closet. It's a good season to preach the gospel. Somebody say amen and stop get frightened. It's a good season to tell somebody that Jesus loves them. It's a good season to tell them how God made them in his image and his likeness. It's a good season to tell them that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. It's a good season. Somebody give God praise in this place. Y'all getting quiet. Are you frightened of LGBT season? It's a good season to tell them that the rainbow does not mean freedom for everything. It's a season to tell everybody that Jesus Christ, by his grace, is able to reach that which was broken. Good season. It's a challenge, though, because when you step into the arena of this pride season that we have, it's a challenge. Because you are going to have to stand up for something. You are going to have to stand up for what God says and what God says. You are going to have to stand up for what God declares and not what we think. Mm -hmm. This is our challenge. That if we want to walk in faith with God, we have to tell somebody that God loves you but he hates the sin. Do you hear me somebody? That God loves you but he hates the sin. And sin cannot be part of God's kingdom. Huh. This is our challenge today. Lostness means that you are without that redemptive hand. But hear me. Jesus gives us a stark message. That in the midst of this loss, it comes to find the lost sheep. Somebody give God praise right now. It comes to find, not just to find. Oh, hallelujah. I just love it how this happens. He comes to find the lost sheep. Then he puts him on or her on his shoulders. My yoke is easy. And my burden is light. <laughs> he puts them on his shoulders. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right now. He does not just say, follow me home. He says, I'm taking you home. Somebody give God praise. 
he puts them on his shoulders and said, look, the journey is long out of hell's gateway. I'm going to take you into a safe place. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give God praise right now. On his shoulders. Oh, hallelujah. And that means when you are lost, the burden of sin wants to kill you. But Jesus comes and says, I'm going to carry you on my shoulder. Huh. And bring you into a place of safety. Into the sheepfold. Where no wolf can come. Oh, hallelujah. Because they asked him, what are you? Are you the good shepherd? He said, yes, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd knows his sheep. Hallelujah. He does not allow a hireling to come and allow the sheep to get eaten. But he lays himself in the danger zone to stop the wolf from coming in. Somebody give God praise. What did he mean by good shepherd? This is what he meant. There are shepherds that are hired for money who will look after sheep just to breed them for the purpose of meat and for the purpose of money. They are called hirelings. Then there is the shepherd who has been given the task by his mother or his father or whosoever has been doing it before him. It's handed down by generations, so they call it their vocation. Hireling uses every weapon to keep the sheep in order. The shepherd uses his voice to keep the sheep in order. The shepherd hardly even uses a sheepdog. They know his voice. Somebody help me now. So therefore, the hireling has to use a stick, a weapon, a prod, a whatever he can use. He makes the dogs bite them to get in order. But the shepherd whistles and calls their name and they know the shepherd. Come on, help me somebody. When trouble rises, hireling runs for their life because their life is not worth the sheep. Oh, hallelujah. Let me talk to somebody. But when the shepherd sees the, 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 the wolf coming in, he is like David wrestling with the bear. These sheep belong to me. You, wolf, will not take a sheep unless you take me. Watch what happens. In the sheepfold, there is one gate. Not four, not five. It is fashioned so that the sheep cannot get out of the gates anywhere. They are locked in. The shepherd sleeps across the gate. Hear me somebody. And therefore, when any dangerous creature or a thief comes in, they have to climb over or they have to go over the shepherd which is lying across the gate. Do you hear me somebody? So therefore, when the wolf comes to take the sheep, the shepherd is across the doorway. Hmm. So what happens here? To get to the sheep, the wolf has to destroy the shepherd. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody help me here now. To get to you, the enemy has to destroy the good shepherd. Oh, hallelujah. To get to you, he has to destroy the heavenly father. That's why the apostle Paul said, my life is hid in Christ, in God. To get to you, when you are in God, he has to go through Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Before he gets to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Bible says in Psalms that he give his angels charge over you. Oh, hallelujah. So he has to go through the angelic force first. When he's finished with the angelic force, he has to go through the hedge that is built around you. Then he has to get through the blood. Then he has to hit the Holy Ghost. He has to hit the Son. And he has to hit the Father. I've got news for you. God said you will not even touch the edge. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. But when you are not in the sheepfold, oh God, help me somebody. Your protection is gone. Huh. Anything can happen. Anybody can destroy you. Because you're not in the sheepfold. That is why the shepherd comes out. And he rescues you. Puts you on his shoulders. And carries you back to where you belong. And where you belong is in the presence of God. And some people say, well, it's too much restrictions there. God's restrictions are your lifeline. 
God gives you restrictions, you must understand why God is doing it. Hmm. Sometimes you, your children get upset, don't they, when you put restrictions on them. Because you see the danger before they see it. When God puts restrictions on you, he says, I see the danger before you see it. Hmm. Hmm. Some people are silent now. That's when God tells you, leave it alone. You must leave it alone. Hmm. That's when God tells you, shun the very appearance. He means shun, run, look away, walk away. You wonder why some people get in problems sometimes. Because they don't understand that when you shun the very appearance of evil, you say to yourself, I'm not even getting into the arena. You understand what I'm saying? Look like some of you don't understand what me I say. Some of you have to boil it down a little bit easier for you. When Mr. Nice start text you some rude message, no matter text him back. It's called delete. It's called block disrespectful messages and you start get cute. <laughs> when sister so-and-so starts send you whatever, miss thing, delete, block, turn off your phone, shun the very appearance. No, Bishop, we're going to have to share the gospel with them. Your fierce favor, share gospel. No, Bishop, you know, because, you know, because, you know, we have to win one, win one, win one. When somebody shows you what their agenda is, then there's no other agenda. Do you understand what I'm saying? you got to understand what platonicness is from what there's something that is untoward. Somebody hear me today? This is the challenge in our day. Because nothing wrong with nothing. Nothing wrong with nothing. Nothing wrong with nothing. Go on holiday same way with boyfriend and girlfriend. I wonder why they get mixed up. Shun the very appearance. That means that you got to structure yourself so you keep chased. Am I talking to somebody? Run quick if it's you. If not, just keep your seat. Then no one will know. Because this is the problem. When you come close to danger, don't flout it. When you play with fire, oh God, I got to talk to somebody here. Yeah, I get silent in here. And then I get Ricky to lock the door. When you play with fire, you will get burnt. That's when your anointing drops. Samson thought he could play with fire. And every time he went near the fire, he said, I'm just cool enough to step out. When it gets a little bad, I'm just cool enough. I know myself. Everybody talk about this. I know myself, pastor. You do not know yourself. Behave yourself. Samson thought he knew himself. But when it was too late, him locks cut off. Turned into a crazy ball head. You understand somebody? It does not start in one conversation. You can be drawn away. It does not start with one uh, uh, text message. It could start with one and then the other, 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 then the next thing on top of the next thing, on top of the next thing, on top of the next thing. And then the next thing is you can't fast your way out of lust. Do you hear me, somebody? You must lock certain things off. Tell your neighbor, lock it off. Huh. Everybody start to get troubled now and start to get worried. Listen, it doesn't matter how much people fall by the wayside, backslide, or fornicate, or sin, you know. The Bible remains the same. Even if preacher is in sin, he's got to preach the same Bible and rebuke even himself. Do you hear me, somebody? And I'm telling you this today because you and I know that many preachers have fallen from pulpit into bed where and it's not with them wife. Because they flout the things of God. You see, because when you are lost, sometimes you just don't know it. Because the enemy deceives you into thinking it's still all right. Ah. 
see, that's why sometimes when we're trying to get this breakthrough, we have to force it. We have to push hard for four, five weeks. We have to keep worshiping through because when we should be overcoming on every week, some weeks we come and there's a whole lot of slackness. And it's not just the sexual things. It's the lying and the bad minds that goes along with it. That says you're lost, but you don't know you're lost. But here comes Jesus. I've come to take you out of that bad mind situation. I'm going to put you on my shoulders and I'm going to get you back to the place where you should be. I want to come to the table, you know, but somebody trouble me in this place. I'm not saying that you're going to hell, but if you're part of the kingdom, don't bring slackness onto the altar. It's the things that trouble God. Jesus don't mind sinners coming in. But he does not want the people of God to step out into it. It's time for the saints to understand. And the sinner to know that there is a hell to shun and a heaven to gain. Oh, does somebody hear me today? Does somebody hear me today? If you hear me, say amen. If you don't like it, walk out. Go on. There's only one Bible we can preach. It doesn't matter how many people bring some funny homily in here to accept every slackness. Sooner or later, you will stumble across the word of God that tells you. They exchange the glory of God to their own reptobate behavior. That's in Romans. Sooner than later, God will bring his righteousness back up to where it's supposed to be. It doesn't matter how many preachers lie and tell you that sin is righteousness. It doesn't matter how many prophets tell you, you will rise and you will not fall. If you are in sin, you will fall. It doesn't matter how many ministries rise up doing their own foolishness every day. And nobody can tell anybody, that is wrong. Oh, I understand, girl. I understand. Still, anyway, go up. Still preach anyway. No! Sit down if you're in slackness. Seek the mind of God. Repent and believe. Restore yourself back to God. You could be the overseer of the overseers, the bishop of the bishops, the greatest bishop on the face of the earth. When you walk lightning flash, if you don't repent, you are going to hell. We've got to straighten this thing up. You see, with God, you see, I'm going to come to the table now because you're getting me vexed up and confused now. There is no gray area. Do you hear me, somebody? There is no in between the lines. Behave yourself. You are not reading in between the lines. God don't understand our day. God understands from eternity to eternity. He changes not. Knows every situation. And some things are beguiling. Somebody say beguiling. Because that's how the sheep walk out. Because it's beguiling. It's, it confuses. It takes away. But in Jesus' name. Somebody say in Jesus' name. There is a fountain filled with blood. Drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And sinful people plunge beneath that flood. They lose all of their guilty stains. That's the message message of life the message of life that is the message of life somebody give God praise right now this day and age what we need is a church on fire somebody give God praise sinful people need a church on fire huh. Huh. you know some sinners always make excuses oh, the church is full of hypocrites you stay there when God speaks huh. although we may have some transformed hypocrites when you're lost you're lost in the sheepfold God can do the work somebody don't hear me today you can kill everybody from outside the sheepfold but you are going to hell when you come inside the sheepfold hallelujah somebody give God praise there God can pour in the oil and just a little bit of wine 
in the sheepfold, God can cover you. God can protect you. God can heal you. God can deliver you. God can say to the enemy, back off, let the breeze cool me up. When you're in the sheepfold, God stands up with the authority of heaven and says to the enemy, these are my sheep. What are you playing with, man? Huh. You see, because the scripture tells you only one time God allowed Job to get tested. When the enemy came after Job, God says, hey, 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 hey. He said, my man, Job. You see, God can speak back to us, don't you see? See, my man Job, him is a man amongst men, you know. And the enemy said, hmm, vex. But listen carefully, what he was vexed with? Hmm, but you put an edge around him, so I can't touch him. <laughs> Somebody give God praise. The Bible said that he give him temporary leave, but he said leave his soul. Because the soul is the one that's connected to me. Hallelujah. Leave his soul. But watch what happens here. He comes back and when Job finished, God put the edge back. And he gave him an experience to understand what the enemy will do if God lets down. We're going to break bread together. And we are going to restore the hedge around your family. In the name of Jesus. We are going to restore the edge because God wants the edge around you. We're going to break bread together. Come, ushers, let me get ready. Because your family needs God. More than ever, your children need to know what sanctification and redeemed life is. More than ever, we need to know that when we are lost, God can find us. Somebody give God praise. I want you to go with the message. Every person who is not a Christian will have to face judgment if they don't get saved. This is whether you are lesbian, gay, homosexual, transgender, whatever you are, even if you want to marry a tractor, whatever you are, if you are lost, you are lost. One remedy, amen. It's not a harder remedy, you hear me? Because some of you think, Lord Jesus, for them, they kind of mm, people them, it's the heavy blood you need. No. One doesn't get heavy blood and one get light blood. One don't get antiseptic cream and the other get dental. You know what? Dental sting you and burn your heart. It's one blood that cures all sin. That gives everybody an opportunity to serve Almighty God. In this season of gay pride, I want you to tell somebody there is a God who loves you. That whatever your status, he can heal and deliver you from everything that ails you. And you are not alone. All of us have come short of the glory of God. Somebody give God praise right now. Go with a message of redemption. And so we come with this message today to say that those of you who are in partnership with God, and you have made your vow with him. We are going to break bread together. Those of you who have made that commitment through baptism. And through the life of Jesus Christ. Today. We have confessed our sins. And we have asked God to forgive us. Therefore we take and we eat this body. Which is broken for us. In remembrance of him. Therefore we drink this wine. As a part of our remembrance that his blood was shed for us. This cup to us today is a cup of blessing. We bless the cup today. It is the communion of the blood of Jesus Christ. The bread we break today. It is the communion of the body of Christ. For the body has many members but it is one body. And all members of that one body. Being made one body, so we also are in Christ. For by one spirit were we baptized into the body. Whether we are Jews, Greeks, whether slaves or free, and all been made to drink from the one spirit. Now we are the body of Christ. 
members individually. Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give God praise. Hold your neighbor's hand and say, I've made peace with God. Therefore, I'm in communion with him. I make peace with you today as my member in Christ. Hallelujah. As we sanctify ourselves, we say these words. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, said, take, eat, this is my body. And then he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they drank all of it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which was shed for many. We say amen. The Bible says in John 15 and 13, greater love have no man than this. Then a man lay down his life for his friends. Jesus lay down his life for us. So when we repent of our sins and we are in love and charity with our neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, walking henceforth in his holy ways, we draw near in reverence and faith and in thanksgiving to take the communion of our Lord. Amen. Sanctify and bless these, our emblems today, Lord, as they mean everything to us. They are a symbol of our connection that is unbroken. Amen. See you. 
Can I just lift, lift your hands if you haven't got wine? If you haven't got wine. Okay. Okay. If you haven't got bread, keep your hands lifted for me. If you haven't got a wafer. Okay. Let me search the bread. If you haven't got bread, keep your hands lifted. Pastor Paul will come. Hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted if you haven't got bread. Now lift it slightly higher if you haven't got wine. Okay. Wine or bread over here. Wine. Good. Reverend Johnson, you go to those gaps. There we are. If you've got any gaps, keep your hands lifted. If you haven't got wine, lift your hands. Wine or bread? Bread? Okay. If you haven't got wine, keep your hands lifted for me or bread, whichever one. Lift your hand if you haven't got one of the emblems. Everybody has? Okay, over here. Bread or white bread? Paul, Pastor Paul. Okay, we don't want to lift the, the hundred sheep and serve 99. Beautiful. Hallelujah. If everybody has the emblems, if you've got both emblems, just lift your hands for me. If you've got both, or you might not be able to lift them up. <laughs> You got both? Good, okay. Good. If you don't have one or the other, lift your hand up. Do you all have bread? Say amen. Do you all have wine? Amen. Praise God. Good. And as in our good traditions, we serve ourselves last. Amen. Sad. 
As they were eating, the Bible said, Christ paused the occasion and turned it into a memorial service that gave revelation of his death and also his resurrection. So he says, I am the bread of life, which came down from heaven. And if you eat of me, you will it is the body of Christ, broken for you. Amen. Eat and live. After the same manner, he took that cup. It was what he knew to be a bitter cup, a cup that would test him, a cup that he would say, I wonder if it could pass me. But he said, no, nevertheless, thy will be done and not mine. And so it is the blood of Christ. Healing the wound of our damagedness. Curing our thirst. Anointing our lives. Reminding us that Jesus Christ died for our sins. Drink and never thirst. Let us meditate and pray for a moment. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we do this not as a miraculous meal, but you are miraculous God. We do it as a memorial to him who lives forever, Jesus Christ. He is the unseen guest at our dinner table. He is the one who makes intercession for us, moving beyond the outer court even to the inner parts, wherewith he gives us access to the throne of God. He is the one who is the redeeming sacrifice, the Christ of Calvary, the one with the matchless life, struggle victoriously with death, faithful to the end, not even death could hold him down. But up from that grave he arose. It is that Christ that we humbly worship. It is that Christ that we humbly serve. It is that Christ that we thank. Because he did not stay in that grave. But he broke the hand of Satan. And he took captivity captive. And he rescued us from our lostness. Now are we the sons of God. So now, Lord, we arise from your table. 
filled with courage, new strength, new poise, new power to live for you. Amen and amen and amen. And so, Lord, we remember the last communion we had, some of our members with us, but now they sleep. The last communion we had, Elder Bailey, but now he sleeps. Some of the communions before we had, our brother Miller, Sister Ruben, Sister Salome, Sister Mary Gavidan, Sister Daly, but Lord, they sleep now. And they wait for that resurrection day where they will be united with the living. Father, we remember more than them who have passed. Our beautiful, lovely brother Jeff, an uncle to all. We remember those who have passed, Lord God, in our time and season. We remember, Lord God, those who helped with the grounds here with broken hands and cheerful souls. Elder Morris came down and he helped us make this happen. With colds, flus, and damaged foot, Deacon Hines came down daily as a Levite to set the house of the Lord in order. Father, how grateful we are that you have given us them. And how ungrateful it must seem to you that we don't want to let them go. So Lord, strengthen us because we miss them. We miss their talk. We miss their prayers. We miss them, God. But Lord, thank you that we will not miss them not longer from this. When you crack those clouds, and when you put your foot on the Mount of Olives, we will recognize them, and they will recognize us. And the body of Christ will rejoice, because there will be no more death, no more suffering. But all shall be together with him, who is the uncreated one. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Slain before the foundations of the world. Father God, help us to live for you. In Jesus' name. Somebody say amen and amen. We live for him. So let the blessing of God overshadow you and keep you. Let no weapon from the enemy form against you. And let the faith that you have transfer into your family that they may see Christ for themselves. Amen. Amen. Get ready to pass your cups right to the edge for me and then we will collect those in from you and then we just have a couple of presentation and notices to give and our deacons and ushers will come down and collect them from you real quick. Thank you so much.
so much. Be seated for just one moment as we get ready to go. Hallelujah. There's a final presentation. I, I'm just looking for my secretary. If someone could just ask her to come for me, I don't know who's going to do the presentation. But Over this week, we've been giving God thanks for Sister Jackson's birthday. I can't tell you what one it is, but it is a big age, but still younger than me. So I want to give God thanks for her. Okay, so, uh, however, we need Sister Jackson. Where is she now? Please welcome Sister Jackson as she comes. Amen. Now, we want to thank God for you. And it is your birthday this week. What day was it? Thursday. Hallelujah. Amen. And we want to congratulate you on being 24 for the 10th year. And so I'm going to ask Sister Ratsy to come. But we have a little gift to, to, to give to you. And then she's going to present. Sister Ne, I just want to say how lovely you are and uh, how you are such an example to the church and the young people. And uh, we just want to wish you a happy birthday. You've, you've already celebrated your birthday. Mm -hmm. And this is on behalf of the church, the ladies, and everyone. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wish you many more. And God bless you. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words, Sister Jackson? I love you all lots. She says she loves you all. Less, less than me, though. Never mind. Thank you so much. We want to thank God for you. We're going to stand. I'd just like to let you know that Sister Morgan's funeral is 10 a.m. at George Street. New Testament Church of God, George Street. That's 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. So please remember that. Keep that on your calendar and keep the... Morgan's family, in your prayers, please, and also the rest of the family that are connected to that. Please stand with me as we close in the name of the Lord. Just to remind you also that this evening service this evening, please come out. We are going to ask you to get your testimony and get your short exaltations ready. We're going to have a time where we will just return that blessing back to God, and we have a time of blessing and celebration. Amen. So 6.30 this evening. So let the blessing... And the benediction of the Lord Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, our good shepherd, be yours today. Amen and amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.
Lord, you can keep us safe, peacefully. The song say that, Lord, we need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Lord, we need to trust you to everything. So into the midst, you come to bless. David said that he was down into the valley of the dead. Lord, but you was into the midst with him. Lord, and so we pray here today as we come to see the word together. Me and you, Lord. Nothing in between the soul and the Savior. Come on, we can find a way to bless your children on a Sunday. So, Lord, be with us here tonight as we come and we lift up warrior. Here into this place, as thou art worthy to be praised. As we seek your word, trust in you that you will follow. Follow from heaven right into this place. James Cleveland, hallelujah, hail to the king. Kirk Franklin, Fred Donnie, and the Winans really bless my soul. Helen Baylor and Ron Kinole, but of this I'm sure I'm created to sing it. Cause the reggae, to worship him in spirit, I'm created to sing it. Cause the reggae, to worship him in truth, I'm created to sing it. Cause the reggae, to heal, to save, to bless, and to deliver my kind.